Hey everybody, we're back with another big project again today. We are inside the house today. Looking towards the living room over there. And what we've got is a bunch of rough sawn lumber here. And this is all from trees that I cut over on the east side of my place. We had an opportunity, the uh, FFA in Montrose, they were doing a Food for America Day, uh, where they take all the kids around and give presentations and talk about different agricultural businesses. And one of the families around has a bandsaw sawmill, and they were going to do a demonstration and knew that I was thinking about cutting some of my own lumber for uh, cabinets or different projects that I'm going to be doing. So they invited me to bring some, some logs and, and saw them up. So this is what we ended up with. Um, I cut and color color coded them as I as I cut them. So over here on the left, I've got some white oak that we cut. This is cut into about uh, the the one on the right here. These are four by tens. Those uh, I have a plan for those to become a workshop uh, workbench tabletop. And then on the left, we saw those up four inches. Uh, four inches thick and left a live edge for possibly an island that I've got an idea for so we'll see how that comes out uh, we've got some others here this with the red on the end that's red oak get some of the dust off of there uh, some of that wood's pretty um, we think we're gonna maybe create some cabinets out of that it depends on what we end up liking more this other lumber here with the purple ends that's a pecan tree there so uh, what we're gonna do this stuff was all cut pretty recently the white oak uh, was cut uh, as a tree the tree was cut down a week ago today and the pecan and red oak uh, even shorter than that so it's all very wet still uh, we just sawed it three days ago I guess that was Thursday this is Saturday so it's all still very wet um, I've got a little moisture meter here a Klein tool I ordered off of Amazon and anytime you set it down on there it just airs out it's particularly wet these are some of these boards got rained on on the trailer last night but even when I put it on the ones that were kind of shielded and, and dry it still uh, maxes out the meter, so they're obviously wet, that's expected. Um, not sure exactly when we're gonna get them used, but hopefully within a few months here, I don't wanna let them just air dry for a year or so. So what we're gonna try to do is put together a homemade kiln uh, to try and get them dried a little bit faster. So um, now that I've got them all in the shop here, I need to get them stacked and stickered. We're gonna put them over here where the um, living room is going to be to start uh, and we'll build our little kiln there we'll bring you along on the process but first I need to get some stickers cut so we can get the stuff stacked and spaced out so we didn't end up cutting any stickers at the sawmill um, I knew I had plenty of lumber to use already um, and I thought maybe I could use I've got some of these two by eights that are kind of cracked up this one was pretty twisted so I cut it up into shorter pieces um, I also wondered if maybe using the dry boards already wouldn't help avoid some of the sticker stain that I hear people talk about. Um, when you use a sticker that's made from the same wood or that was uh, wet as well, cut at the same time, um, the fact that those two woods are in contact kind of holds the moisture in there and I've heard it kind of causes some, some staining on the boards. Um, this is the first time I've ever done this so I don't know how much that happens. but. I've heard about it, so I thought maybe I'd try using some dry wood. I've got my DeWalt table saw here set up with a fence to rip on the three quarter inch uh, thick stickers, and we're gonna make them four and a half feet wide. That'll give me the enough room to stack some of those boards um, just based on their widths. Our lumber all stacked and stickered here. 
Those are all the stickers that we cut out of the two-by material that we had. Uh, I put them on 16-inch centers, except you notice here, right in the middle, those are spaced kind of wide. I did that for those those big 4 by beams. Uh, I moved those with a, a two-wheeler, uh, like a furniture moving dolly, and I had to have room for the foot of it to let those down um, so that I could get them off the, the two-wheeler. But we got everything all stacked up, stickered. Uh, it's starting to dry a little bit. It's been here a day or two. I noticed some of these pecan boards that are on top here are starting to cup just a little bit and twist some. So it looks like I'm going to have to get some weights on them. Um, after going through and measuring these and counting things up, it looks like I ended up with about, uh, and this is conservative measurements, about 180 board feet of pecan, 186 board feet of red oak, and 240 board feet of white oak, which are in just those six beams. Here's a shot of all the color coded in so I can keep track of that. Um, next step, we're gonna build a kiln around this to help dry it out a little bit better. Even sitting here, it's been four or five days now. Um, everything still reads uh, above what the moisture meter will read at around 35%. So we're going to try and get it dried down some. The kiln is basically going to be a 2 by 4 frame that's going to go around here. We're going to put some plastic on there to help seal the air in. And then there will be a a fan inside to help circulate the air through the lumber with a dehumidifier. So we're not going to do much with heat, but we're going to dry the air out pretty dry. So hopefully that will help pull the moisture out of this. Okay, the kiln is coming along pretty well. I've got a lot of the 2x4 frame done, and I wanted to give a run through and kind of explain how this is supposed to work before I got it all covered up. So there's the wood pile there. You can see some of the concrete blocks up at the top. I wanted to get a little bit more weight on those top boards as they were starting to crown and cup and move a little bit. So I just put some 2x4 stickers in there and put some concrete blocks to hold them down. We've got the, the lumber pile like we showed a little bit ago. And then, as you can see here, if I can get out of the way of the light, we've got a small wall covered in plastic there that runs pretty close to the side of the lumber pile. There's about two or three inches in between there. Then on this side, we'll have the same thing. So this wall, the outside of this frame, will be covered in plastic. The lumber pile is about 12 feet long, and I made the kiln a total of 16 feet. That's what the lumber that I had worked out well, and it gave me a little bit of air space. So, there's about a foot and a half here past the end of the lumber that the kiln comes out. And then we've got a, an air runway here. And I'll come around to the front and show how this works. So the idea is that the air will come from the fan, be pushed over this way, and through the through the lumber so that's why the top of this is all all covered with plastic we want to keep as much of the air to go only through the lumber as possible so it will come through this area of course this will all be covered in plastic the top the sides and each end the air will come around go through the lumber the plastic i've got Weighted down here just to make sure the air pushes through the lumber. Continue out this into the lumber. Come around. And then go back up this way. So obviously plastic will be covering all of this. In this runway here, I will also put a room dehumidifier, one of the bigger dehumidifiers, to really dry down the air that's in here. And depending upon how things go with the wood stove, um, I may either just have the heat on in here with the floor heat that'll help draw water out of the wood, 
or I may put in a space heater if I've got enough power, if I can run it with my extension cord. We'll kind of see how that goes. But now we'll get to work on covering the outside here with plastic and we'll show how everything works once we get it all started up. We've got everything closed in with plastic now. And over here, we've got the dehumidifier all set up with a hose to drain out. I kicked it on a little bit ago and it said that the air was around 70% relative humidity in here. I set it for 35%, which is just about as low as it will go. And then you can see the fan will circulate, pull the air through here and circulate it. With the plastic on the walls now, you can see that the air will pretty much be forced through the lumber pile. It can't really go anywhere else. I check the moisture on all the boards that I can get to here and they all still read above what the moisture meter will check, uh, which is around 35%. These boards have been cut for almost two weeks now. Um, today is October 15th, 2021. So we will do some, some follow-up videos to this. We'll keep an eye on the moisture and keep you guys updated as to how this all works. So keep an eye out for that.